There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the displacement of metal ions from solution onto the metal itself. And we talked about how that was really important when it comes to transfer of electrons, because without the transfer of electrons from one metal to the other, it wouldn't happen. In this video, we're going to cover something quite related, which is the next stop point. And it says, identify the relationship between displacement of metal ion in solution by other metals and the relative activity of metals. Before we start, I want to make sure we go over that word, relative activity of metals. And what we mean by relative activity of metals, so this word here, relative activity of metals, is if anything is more active, so a more active metal means that it gives away electrons. Right? So the more active metal gives away electrons, whereas the less active metal won't give away electrons. And I'm going to explain again what that means in a second, but here we have a chart or a table. And I'm going to cover this table much more in the future videos, but for now all you need to know about this table is that the ones which are on top are more active metals, and the ones that are at the bottom are less active metals. So overall you have an increase in activity as we go from bottom to top. So activity goes up from bottom to top. So potassium, which is top, is the most active metal, whereas gold on the bottom is the least active metal. So this is what we actually discussed in the last video. This is, again, that same idea that we have copper ions in solution here. So these are the copper ions. Copper ions. And these, this here is the zinc strip. So if we want to have these copper ions, to go onto the actual zinc strip and deposit on it, what needs to happen is, so if this were to happen, if they want to deposit on it, which can happen but doesn't have to happen, then what has to happen is then these zinc, the zinc strip has to give away electrons because the copper ions are missing two electrons. So zinc has to give away electrons, give it to copper, and then copper becomes solid and deposits on the actual zinc strip. So if this is the equation, so this has to happen, otherwise the second step can't happen. The first step is that zinc, which at the moment is that solid, solid zinc here. It has to give away electrons, so it has to give away electrons. And that's these electrons are the ones that it's giving away. And those electrons will then be taken by the, the copper ions in solution. So these copper ions here will take those electrons that zinc has given away, and then zinc the copper, sorry, copper will become a solid and it will deposit. So this is a solid which then deposits on the actual zinc strip. So these orangey dots are the copper depositing because copper has taken electrons from zinc. So this can only happen if zinc is the more active metal than copper. So we look at that table, we look at where both of these are in that table. We can see that zinc is right here, zinc, and copper is right there. All right, so again, the further up they are, the more active they are. So zinc is more active than copper. So this can happen because zinc will actually give away electrons to copper because it's more active, right? But if we actually swap it around, so if we have this, look at this one here, if we swap it around, now we have copper as the metal. So this is copper strip. This is a copper strip, and we have these zinc ions. Now, if this zinc is meant to deposit on the copper strip, what that means is the zinc has to be less active than the copper, or the copper has to be more active than the zinc for it to happen, right? So, if this were to happen, then what has to be the case is that copper has to be more active than zinc. So again, if we look at the table, it's just the reverse. And the problem is copper is not more active than zinc. Copper is less active. So less down here, more up here. So copper is here, less active than zinc. And yeah, so this is, these two steps would have to happen for this to occur. Copper would have to give away electrons, but it doesn't give away electrons because it's not more active. So only the more active one gives away electrons. So this doesn't happen. And zinc would have to take the electrons, but it has no electrons because copper didn't give it to him. So copper... Zinc can't deposit, right? so zinc doesn't deposit, which means this doesn't happen. So 
the depositing part only happens if the extra metal that is in a solution is less active than the metal on the strip. Or you could just say that the metal on the strip here, the whatever metal we put in, the solid metal, has to be more active than the steel metal or the ions in the solution. Otherwise, it wouldn't occur. What I'm going to show you next is an animation that goes over those two points again. First, we have copper solution and we have a zinc strip. So if you put the zinc strip into the copper solution, what will actually happen is the copper will, will deposit on the zinc, on the zinc and the copper ions will give away, so they will swap, these two plus will move to the zinc strip. And the reason why is because zinc has given away its electrons and that makes the zinc two plus and the copper makes it solid. Right? So that happens. But if we have the reverse, if we have the copper, um, uh, copper strip going into the zinc solution, what will actually happen is nothing because the copper is not the stronger, more active metal. It's a weaker, it's a less active metal, which means zinc will not deposit on copper. So I'm going to quickly go over this again in terms of another example. So we have four examples here. We have zinc being the metal, zinc being the metal, and copper, the solution. So what we mean, this is the same example as we had beforehand. So what will happen is there will be deposits on the actual metal because copper will deposit on the um, zinc because zinc is a more active metal. Now the next example, we've got silver as our metal. Silver as our metal and copper still as our solution. And copper was here and silver is actually one below. So silver is less active than copper. So what we expect to happen is nothing, no change. Copper does not, so it does not go on to the um, silver. The reason why is because it's less active because silver is less active than copper. In this case, we've got magnesium and copper. Magnesium is some copper solution and magnesium um, strip. Magnesium is right here and copper is here. So the difference is actually quite big, which means that magnesium is much more active than copper. So what we would expect is that we have some deposits of copper going onto the um, magnesium, which does actually happen. So we have deposits happening and that's because magnesium is a more active metal than copper. Last we have copper and our metal is iron. So iron is our metal and iron is right here. Iron is right here. So again copper here and iron here. So iron is a more active metal which means we would expect copper to deposit on iron which it does as well. So it's a thin brown black deposit slightly. So the further apart the more deposits will happen but when we had copper as our solution and silver as our metal nothing happened because silver was the less active metal and would have to be the more active metal for the copper to deposit on it. So just to summarize, so identify the relationship between displacement of metal ions in solution by other metals and the relative activity of metals. So if we want to have one of the metals in solution depositing or displacing the metals on the strip, then the strip has to be more active, a more active metal than the uh, solution metal. So if it's more active, if the strip is more active than the solution, it will be displaced. Otherwise, if it's a weaker metal, it will not be displaced. That's basically what we just discussed in this actual video itself. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.